How could a no-fly zone in Ukraine start World War III? No-fly zones ban aircraft from flying over protected areas. For example, Operation Southern Watch in Iraq. But Iraq's southern no-fly zone was 200 miles long. Ukraine has 1,400 or so miles of border. So you can't just throw a couple of fighters in the air. You need airborne tankers and early warning aircraft. These specialized aircraft aren't exactly nimble. They would be sitting ducks for Russia's highly advanced surface-to-air missile system. And these missiles have a range of 200 miles. Which means NATO has to go into Russia and hunt these weapons. So a no-fly zone turns into bombing Russia literally the first day. There's also the question of friendly fire. How does NATO make sure they're shooting a Russian MiG instead of a Ukrainian one? That means deconfliction. So NATO has to embed air controllers in with Ukrainian forces. That seems less like a no-fly zone and more like a war. A no-fly zone might be a moral imperative, but we have to be aware of the consequences that will happen day one. We also have to understand that World War III may have already started and we're just delaying the inevitable. 